Hello everyone, um, let's get started. So my name is Zizi from the Faculty of Science. Thanks for joining us today at this talk on medical science, nutrition and health. So we're joined today by uh, Professor Philip uh, Peronic for medical science, uh, Professor Margaret Allen uh, Ferinelli for nutrition and dietetics, and Dr. Lee Wilson for the health program. Uh, just a quick note that to keep the things on schedule, we won't be having a Q&A as part of this session. However, we encourage you to join us in our Science Court Advice Center room if you do have any questions after the presentation, where our academic Philip, Margaret Lee, and many more of our science staff will be available as well. Um, all right, that's it from me. I'll pass it over to you, Philip, and please call next slides when you're ready. Okay, so <clears throat> thank you, Zizi. Welcome, everybody. Um, can see about 300 people have joined us already. Um, our next slide, Zizi. So my name's Phil Pronick. I'm the Program Director and Professor of Biomedical Science in the Faculty of Medicine and Health. And I'll just talk to you for a few minutes about the Medical Science Program at the University of Sydney. Okay, so um, next slide, please. I guess the first question you will need to think about is what is biomedical science? Because that can be quite a daunting um, sort of a construct for people but really it's about thinking about how the body works and what goes wrong in disease and how we can make people better okay and as you can see it, it involves a lot of things and if you look at the bottom COVID really gives you an idea of what's going on so for example basic research is very important clinical applied research the epidemiology around all this COVID stuff is amazing the industry the amazing um, progress we made in getting a vaccine in, in 12 months is amazing um, also, very important things like philosophy and ethics and, and, and policy, regulatory affairs. And as we're starting to see also the emergence of personalised medicine, okay, so where we can actually look at your genome or whatever else and think about what the best treatment might be for you, okay. And really importantly, it also involves collaborating with the colleagues in design, IT engineering, biomedical engineering, even dietitians and nutritionists, etc. And I think what we've learned from this current uh, epi pandemic is that there's a lot of stuff we still don't know. And so it really is probably the most exciting time to be studying medical sciences at the moment. It is really a very exciting and, and wonderful field. Uh, next slide, please. And so if you think about it, um, there's a nice picture of some students doing a, a lab class in the good old days, and we could still do this in the um, Charles Perkins Centre. We've got these wonderful state-of-the-art facilities which I'm sure you get to use next year, okay? Um, but the objectives of the program are really to, as when you graduate, that you have an integrated understanding of how the medical sciences work. So if this is a really, if you're interested in the medical sciences and not quite sure what you want to do, this is a really great program that gives you a really good depth and breadth across the whole area. So you can make some really informed choices around your future careers, okay? And so it gives you a broad and deep knowledge of medical sciences. Really importantly, the skills to explore and, and, and apply your understandings in laboratory and other settings. Um, very, very important things like thinking, um, communicating, thinking critically, thinking globally. These things, as you can see now, the students coming from the last couple of years of high school disasters, um, this ability, this resilience and everything was really, really important. And learning how you're, you're um, seeing before you how important it is to be able to communicate the science in this crazy times. Okay? Also, it's a digital world we're living in, so digital literacy, the tools to work in the 21st century, and important, the opportunities to interact with scientists, clinicians, everybody involved in medical sciences. We're a very big research, research intensive university with many partners, so you get a chance to interact with all these people, okay? And all of those things are above the way to best um, plan your career paths, okay, and be the best equipped to pursue the journey. And something we're very um, passionate about is really being creative Scientists are the, the upper level of creative workers, and so embracing risk and uncertainty are very important things that we want you to develop, and we'll help you to help you to develop. Uh, next slide, please. Um, in terms of what you'll study, it's a fairly standard-looking bachelor of science program. So, in the first year, you'll do some mathematics and chemistry and biology, which serves as the fundamentals. Okay, so that's sort of a bridge between what you've learned at school and consolidating your knowledge into the way we think about these things at university as professionals. The second year, you'll delve deep into core units, learning about physiology, pharmacology, anatomy, 
immunobiology, etc., plus some electives. And th in third year, you'll complete your medical science major plus your second major or, or minor and, and undertake an interdisciplinary capstone project, which a student's doing right now, and they're doing amazing projects with all sorts of wonderful people across campus, um, exploring, learning how to communicate aspects of COVID. And finally, um, you should bear, bear in mind that year four can vary very important. So if you're interested in doing research, um, the honours year, okay, or there's also the um, advanced studies, which allows you to do projects. So you should really think about a fourth year to really consolidate and demonstrate what you've learned is very important. Uh, next slide, please. Lizzie. Okay, so if you look at more in more detail, this is the kind of um, study plan that you've got. So in first year, you've got um, your chemistry, you've got two mathematics units, and as of next year, there's Psi 1001, which is really interesting applied um, sort of applying quantitative principles to real world problems and data 101, which is a really excellent um, statistical course for you to do. And you'll do human biology, molecules, or ecosystems, chemistry, these OLEs, which are open learning environments. These are small um, subjects that allow you to um, explore your interests and get more depth and breadth in your, in your studies alongside um, a second major or electives, okay? And in year two, you'll see you've got these five units of study that you do that covers pharmacology, physiology, immun um, immunology, anatomy, and biochemistry, molecular biology, plus your second major or OLEs that you're doing, okay? And in year three, the interdisciplinary project, your selective units that you can do, as well as electives and completing your, or completing your second major. And then fourth year is either the project or an honours year, okay? So we've tried to make this nice and clear cut for you. It allows you a lot of flexibility. So the medical science major in this stream will give you the depth and breadth you need across the medical science. And you can pair that with any major or minor that you would like to, um, um, to pursue along your own interests. Okay, so it's a very flexible and very um, rewarding program to undertake. Next slide. I think obviously people think about the careers in medical science and this is just a few of them, okay? So obviously things like analytics, um, healthcare, of course, research is a very big one that students choose, um, pol learning policy, consulting in the pharmaceutical and health industries, things like communication, filmmaking, as well as education. And of course, then there's also the postgraduate um, options for dentistry and medicine. Right? So this, this degree gives you a really big, broad background, allows you to do pretty much um, anything you want to in the health space. And rem rem remembering this is actually just a stepping stone, okay? The BSc is your first stepping stone to the rest of your career. So many of you will undertake postgraduate study to get further qualifications, okay? Next slide, please. And here's a nice little profile from Aisha here. She actually did medical science honors um, at Westmead, I think, or she's doing a PhD at Westmead. And you can see from what she said, the pleasure, of, and this is typically what you get at working at a good university, pleasure of working alongside a team of incredibly kind, intelligent, hardworking researchers that have inspired me to strive to be the best I can. So we really do try and inspire you to strive to be the best you can, okay? And most students really find this experience incredibly rewarding and gives them a deeper understanding of life and prepares them for, um, as she's now doing a PhD. So, that's just a little um, medical sciences in a nutshell. Um, I think it's probably worth saying now that the medical, if you want to do postgraduate medicine, you have to get a degree, an undergraduate degree. This medical science program is a nice preparation for to study medicine or dentistry, but it doesn't guarantee you entry into, into medicine or dentistry. You have to do the other um, um, exams and things to get into medicine. So this is not a pre-med course, it's a course designed to get people are interested in medical science to give them the best depth and breadth possible so they can make some really exciting decisions as, as, their future, for the, as to their future careers. Okay, so I think that's enough from me and I'll look forward to seeing you in the um, breakout rooms later. And of course, contact us if you've got any problems, questions. And I'll pass on to Margaret. Yes, okay, Margaret, please, thank you. Thanks, Phil. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to the University of Sydney this morning on behalf of the Nutrition and Dietetics team. Before we start, I'd like to tell you a few things about Nutrition and Dietetics at Sydney. We've been doing it a long time. In fact, 
The first course was set up in 1967, a postgraduate diploma in nutrition and dietetics, which is the original course for this country. It was 10 years later that another course opened. I'd also like to tell you that we have very dedicated teachers here at the University of Sydney. I myself am a Fellow of Dietitians Australia, which is recognition of the contribution I've made to teaching research at the international level. And four of my staff are advanced APDs, which shows that they are acknowledged as specialists in their area by the professional body. When you're here, and we're really looking forward to seeing you all on campus next year, Apart from all the wonderful things on offer at the University of Sydney, when you do this course, you'll get to um, do your work in first class facilities. Our research home is the Charles Perkins Centre and Phil showed you at the beginning the super labs that we have for doing your lab work in science and also we have a brand new building um, called the Lees building where uh, other science labs will take place. Additionally, we're part of the Faculty of Medicine and Health and we're able to use the facilities in the new Susan Wakefield building, which has world-class state-of-the-art facilities. So I'm sure that those things will help you enjoy your experience at Sydney. So on to the next slide. Okay, why study nutrition and dietetics? Well, it's known as one of the great global health challenges to solve the problem of what we call non-communicable diseases, chronic disease. In fact, the University of Sydney Charles Perkins Centre, a world leading centre, is there to study obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, as well as centers in cancer, because we know that diet is at the heart of these diseases. So whether you're looking for a career in the research or in the um, actual um, practice of dietetics, I think that we can offer you a good experience doing a BSc Master of Nutrition and Dietetics. You will have diverse employment and career opportunities and the degree is accredited by Dietitians Australia, which is the professional degree, uh, the professional accrediting body of degrees. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so what does the program look like? Well, you can see that it's got quite a few similarities to Phil's program. Now, during the first year of the program, it's year one to year three is your BSc, and then in year four and five is the specialist part, the Master of Nutrition and Dietetics. Now, all dietitians need to have a good knowledge of chemistry. So in year one, you will take two semesters of chemistry, and then you will take two semesters of biology-related subjects. Some of these are the subjects that the students in the B-Med side will be doing. And as Phil says, we've opened up some new opportunities in maths, uh, exciting um, opportunities in terms of managing data and real-world data and learning statistics. And we need these things uh, when we're going to be studying nutrition and dietetics. In our second year, we have to get a good understanding of our biochemistry. We have to be able to understand how our body works. So after that food goes into your mouth, where does it go around the body and how? And between biochemistry and molecular biology and physiology, which Phil is one of our wonderful teachers, um, you will learn all the underlying scientific concepts you need to understand nutrition and dietetics. And then in third year, 
you will do four subjects which are about food and nutrition to prepare you to come into the masters you can see there that there is the opportunity for a couple of electives so if there's some other subject uh, that you can see in science perhaps in the um, health subjects you've got the opportunity to take those and as well as Phil said you'll do um, these online learning and there's some really interesting ones on offer there's a great one about diabetes sleep we do one about the science of health and well-being so plenty of choices for people who have an interest in health and are going on to the master of nutrition and dietetics now the fourth year is largely coursework so the first semester kind of gives you all the knowledge and skills you're going to need to apply in studying nutrition and dietetics. And the next semester is the core study of the areas of dietetics. As dietitians, we specialize in medical nutrition therapy, which is one-on-one -on -one consultations with patients. And we're actually the prof only profession in nutrition that the federal government recognizes to give that one-on-one. -on -one. And we also have community and public health nutrition, trying to look after populations and the nutrition. And the other area where we work is in food service management. Now, what's happened, you've probably heard about this inquiry into aged care. They really need dietitians in there giving more advice um, in the food service management area, as well as practicing their medical nutrition therapy. And in fact, they've asked us, can we get a dietitian into every aged care home? So there's about two and a half thousand out there. So it's going to be an area that opens up with employment prospects. And during the second year for 20 weeks, you'll do four different placements. Uh, so you'll be working in hospitals, private practice, with the um, New South Wales Health Share, which manages all of the food service in New South Wales, and also with um, community health teams. And then we have a full semester of research. We're very proud of that full semester of research. It's what actually gives our students a market advantage to other courses. And the good thing about it is if you'd like to do a PhD, that research semester actually qualifies you to go straight into a PhD without having to do an honours back after your science degree. Next slide, please. So what's the professional pathway? Well, most of you here today who are in undergrad will be wanting to do our five-year pathway, which is admission straight from school into the Bachelor of Science and then a guaranteed place in the two-year Masters. Now, I have been told the indicative ATAR for this year is 97.5 or 40 if you're doing the baccalaureate program. It's only indicative, it could go down, it could go up. But in case you don't make that ATAR straight from school, please come and do a Bachelor of Science with us. I showed you the pathway the dietitians are doing, just do that pathway in science. And then at the end of, or halfway through third year, apply to us because many students then will come into the Master of Nutrition and Dietetics. If you've got a credit average over the three years, which is actually quite easy to get, so long as you apply yourself, we'll have a place for you at this later stage. So do not despair. I can tell you year after year on this open day, I talk to parents and students, they say, oh, I'm going to get 90. I don't think I'll get in. Come here, do the science with us. I guarantee you'll be capable of getting in um, during the third year of science into the Master of Nutrition and Dietetics. Next slide, please. Have we got a stuck slide? Can we go to the next one? Aha, so I just want, here is one of our very happy gradu graduates, Edward Lund. So he finished uh, the degree back in 2018. And here you can see him standing outside Concord Hospital. And he has a position as a clinical dietitian working with unwell patients in the hospital. But you can see that it, 
lots, lots of interesting things that we actually um, have outreach to the community. So on this day, he was trying to do a community display so that all staff and visitors knew about the importance of calcium and avoidance of osteomalacia and osteoporosis. So he's very impressed by our alumni because he could shadow a dietitian in their area of expertise and reach out for mentoring opportunities to develop professional and clinical skills. Indeed, there are lots of events advantages in coming to Sydney because we have access to all of the large teaching hospitals and to numerous alumni who are in private practice and in community and we have literally trained thousands of dietitians. Next slide please. Well that brings us to the end on dietetics and I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Lee Wilson. Thank you Margaret. And I'd like to welcome you all here to um, our open day today. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our degree, the Bachelor of Science with the Health Stream. And this is the degree that you'll be taking if you want to move into um, a health career or perhaps into a, a clinical career as a physiotherapist or an occupational therapist later in your um, university studies. Thanks, Susie. So why study this degree? Well, it's a really good degree to give you a strong foundation, both in science and also in um, understanding about the healthcare system and the way the healthcare system works. We, we are able to give you the opportunity to think critically about healthcare and also about the way health uh, interacts with us in an everyday way. And of course, you will have seen recently um, lots of um, presentations by our Chief Health Officer, Dr Chant, um, talking about the COVID pandemic. And we have a lot of our um, students and also some of our alumni that have graduated are currently doing work as vaccinators, but also as contact tracers for the current pandemic. The beauty of this degree is that you can tailor your study um, to specialise in the areas of health that you're interested in. And you'll graduate with a really good rounding of knowledge about the health systems locally, but also health systems overseas. So we do a lot of um, work talking to you and, and teaching you about international health. Um, um, you've already talked about the importance of nutrition, and you're able to do a lot of different areas um, of study that will give you information um, and deep grounding in your personal interest. Next slide, please. So similar to the other two degrees that we've spoken about um, previously, the Bachelor of Science is the core um, for our degree. So in first year, you'll be able to do your core units, which for our degree are biology, um, mathematics and psychology. Um, our recommended uh, maths units to take are the data 1001, which Philip has already spoken about, and the science unit 1001, which is going to be available next year. This is a really good unit that can actually give you a lot of information about solving <clears throat> environmental problems and, and problems in science. In second year, you go more into our health core units. You talk about research in health, innovations in e-health, and you also get an opportunity to take up the online learning environment units. And we ask you to do 12 credit points of those units, preferably in second year. In third year, you go into your health specialisation. This is where you do your research project or you can pick up some health electives, things like evidence-based healthcare, international health, um, a, a deeper understanding of uh, research if you would like to do that, or you can pick a project um, working with an interdisciplinary um, community partner to solve wicked problems in the health system. At the end of these three years, you can leave um, the, the degree with the Bachelor of Science Health. Um, and you often, or well, usually we, are, we, re we recommend you take a second major, which could be, for example, in nutrition, or it could be in psychology, um, it could be in forensic, forensics. Um, we, we ask you to think really seriously about the second major that you're going to take so that you get the best experience in your degree. And again, similar to the other programs, you can go on to a fourth year, um, which is an honours year, which will give you um, much more experience in research, 
um, we work together closely with you and you will have a supervisor to help you through that honours year. At the end of this degree program, you can um, apply to the other courses for graduate entry. So for example, a lot of our students do the Bachelor of, of Science Health with a second major in human movement, and that gives them um, prerequisites to apply for a degree in physio, a graduate entry master's into physiotherapy or occupational therapy. Um, you can also, of course, depending upon your weighted average mark at the end of your degree, um, apply for other areas as well, graduate entry, such as um, medicine and dentistry, as Phil had said, but you, you really have to meet the requirements of those programs as well. Thanks, Susie. So this is what our unit looks like. Again, it's very similar to the other programs. You do your core units in the first year. The orange uh, line at the bottom here is just um, a recommendation. This is the human movement major if you decide to do health and human movement. Um, second year, again, we have our research methods and our health core, as well as your OLEs and an elective. And then in third year, all your disciplinary units for health along with your second major. And of course, year four is your honours year with your research projects. Thanks, Izzy. So we do have two new um, majors available from this year on. One is the disability and participation major. Um, this major will allow you to develop skills and attitudes that underpin um, collaboration to support inclusion of people with disabilities in everyday life. And this major can lead you into the occupational therapy graduate entry program. Uh, we also have the hearing and speech major, which provides a theoretical and practical knowledge for students interested in hearing, speech and audiology. Um, and this major um, is also a good major to take as a second major if you're interested in moving to speech pathology as a graduate entry program. We also have our physical activity and health major. Um, and this gives you a knowledge and understanding of human structure and function. And a lot of our students that are interested in going into graduate entry exercise physiology, for example, or exercise and sports science, um, take this major as part of their um, health degree. Thanks, Susie. So we do have this special pathway that you can get in, as I, I mentioned earlier. So you can start with your Bachelor of Science in Health and then once you finish that, you can apply to go into our specialist master's degree. So we've got a Master of Diagnostic Radiography, Occupational Therapy. We also have Rehabilitation Counselling and Speech Pathology. Um, depending upon your um, weighted average marks, so that is how well you do, we recommend you try and do as well as you can. Um, you may be able to go into those programs directly or you may need to apply. Um, and some of those programs are competitive in nature. Thanks, Izzy. So with this degree, you really have a lot of opportunities to go into a range of different um, work environments and positions. Um, a lot of our graduates work in healthcare. So for example, as healthcare managers, um, systems managers, um, a lot of them have gone on to do clinical degrees, as I've mentioned. We have a lot of students that go into research um, because they find an area of research that they're really interested in or going to health policy, uh, working with government or non-government organisations in public health. I mentioned earlier, a lot of our students have gone on to do a Master of Public Health, um, ending up with qualifications and skills to be able to work in the health department. And they've been used as our surge workforce um, in the current pandemic, looking at um, contract tracing, vaccination, doing planning for um, the way we can actually end up coming out of our lockdown. Some of our students go into the corporate sector, um, working in insurance companies, for example, or rehabilitation counselling. Many of them go into health promotion, working in public health units where they go on to develop um, um, educational tools, for example. So some of our um, students do a second major in marketing and those students have gone on to work with big healthcare organisations doing their marketing promotion. And of course, you could always end up teaching in academia um, and community outreach and education. Thanks, Izzy. This is one of our alumni, this is Emily Gregg, and Emily finished her degree in 2017. 
Um, she was now uh, working in a, um, as, as an intern in New South Wales Health. She loved the subjects that were able to be offered and she also liked to be able to choose her second major. And she chose industrial relations and human resource management. And so she really enjoyed that non-clinical aspect of our degree, whereas other students like the clinical aspect that they can then go on and take later if they wish. Thanks, Izzy. And this is our new Susan Wakefield Health Building. Margaret mentioned this earlier. This is where we are based. Um, and we, we are mostly on level seven. I think Margaret and her team are on level eight. This is a wonderful state-of-the-art building with amazing facilities for teaching, for research, for laboratories. Um, we have wonderful exercise, physiology, gyms, um, fantastic equipment. We have thermal ergonomics laboratory on the top floor, a bit on level nine. And that is a research centre that looks at the impact of heat on health and bodily function, which of course is something that we know is increasing with um, the changing climate that we have. So this wonderful building brings all of our Faculty of Medicine Health Disciplines together. Um, we have, as I said, nursing, um, nutrition, we have health science, exercise physiology, physiotherapy, um, a wonderful library on the ground floor. So if you do get into our degree and you come to our program, you'll be able to experience these wonderful um, environments and learn in the best possible way. Thank you. Thanks everyone uh, for your presentation. And just uh, reiterating that students can head over to our course advice center to ask questions. Um, our friendly student ambassador already posted the link in the chat. Um, so just very quickly, I will just go through the ATA table for our domestic students. So this has all the science courses score for the 2022 entry. Um, noting that the one with the little star next to it is just, um, indicative score only. So you will need to do better and um, like try to aim for your best for these kind of degrees. And also here is the table for international students. And you can also find these uh, admission requirement online. I'll just stop sharing for a second. So it looks like we finish on time and early. I'll just quickly if there's any uh, questions in the Q&A or chat, but feel free to head over to the course advice center to ask any questions. Um, so Dr. Lee, I think you want to answer one of the questions. Yes, so there's a question there that says, is there for any, any forensic work in the um, Bachelor of Science Health degree? I have a student at the moment who is doing the Bachelor of Science Health and she's doing forensic science as her second major. So um, that's a really nice combination of, of two majors um, that work really well together. We don't have any specifically in the health um, stream, but there is the opportunity to do that, yes, if you wish to do that. There is a question, when does the... Um course advice center close is it 2 p.m cc yes so uh, our course advice center will close at two so it start from 10 to two so if you head over there we have our academic there to answer any questions and dr lee you want to answer another one yes so there's another um uh, questionnaire about course details for physiotherapy I can actually, it's probably best that I answer that in the course advice room, I think, because it's quite specific. Um, the entry for um, physiotherapy as a graduate entry is quite different for the entry as part of the um, straight entry from school. So if you go over to the advice room, I'm happy to talk about that in more, in more detail. There's another questionnaire that both the BSc Health and the BSc Medical Science suggest postgraduate medicine is one better than the other. What do you think, Phil? Sorry, I was on, on mute. Um, um, the, the, the medical science, the medical program takes anybody with a bachelor's degree. So it could be from the conservatorium or business or anything. 
And so I think obviously if you do the health stream, um, you'll learn a lot about medical science and you learn a bit more in the medical science stream. But basically you should choose the degree that you're most interested in. And also importantly, gives you more options if you don't get into medicine. Um, a lot of students find once they actually study health or medical science that it's so interesting, they don't want to be doctors. They found one, more interesting things to do, so yes. Yeah, I agree with that totally. So um, as Phil said, uh, the medical program um, takes anybody with a graduate degree. Uh, you need to have quite high entry and you also have to meet their um, entry exams as well. So um, as I said, a lot of our students start off wanting to do that, either go into medicine or dentistry. Um, but they end up doing really exciting careers, for example, in public health or epidemiology or infectious disease or medical science. Um, the only way to get into anesthesiology is to do an MD. Um, um, yeah, so I think um, uh, that's probably the most, most of it. I can see questions start popping up, but I will appreciate if um, anyone who has questions head over to the uh, course advice center. Uh, I just quickly, because someone is asking if I can put the uh, ATA table back. Uh, I'll just quickly put the ATA table here for domestic students. And if you have any other questions, please head over to our course advice center where our academic staff, um, our Margaret Lee and Phil will be there as well to answer any questions you may have. Yep, um, so thank you everyone. Is it okay if I just answer one question? Because people oh, yes. have seen your table and they're very worried when they see this hiatus. As I said to you, do not panic. The ATAR to get into a science degree is 80. So please come along and start out in science. Just pick exactly the same subjects as anyone who got into the BSc stroke MND straight from school. Do, do work. And, you know, you, if you've got that um, wham of 65 and above, you should make it into nutrition and dietetics. So, yeah, this panics people. Please do not panic. <laughs> There's always a second chance. And every year I'd love, I, I'll have to get you to come and meet all the people who I've said this to. And they're all having wonderful careers as dietitians now. So don't panic. You guys have been through such a lot with your HSC via Zoom for most of it. So do not worry, please. This is only indicative. If you don't make it, please do the BSc at Sydney, though. Please come here so you get all the right subjects. If you go elsewhere, you probably won't get the right subjects. So, yeah, don't panic. Thank you so much, Margaret. Um, echoing that, actually, uh, take even MD or DMD, for example, most of the students actually come from a Bachelor of Science degree and they apply for the postgraduate degree instead of the um, double degree entry. So definitely come and do a Bachelor of Science degree and then you can approach from there. Um, yes, so thanks everyone for joining us with this talk today. Please head over to the Course Advice Center and you will you will have our friendly science staff to answer all your questions. Thank you. Bye. Bye.